Hey everyone, so today what I'm going to be working on with Cash and Bella um, is their hatred of the vacuum. They struggle with the vacuum, the mop, and the broom, pretty much anything that makes like that like sweeping brushing motion. Um, I did work on this a little bit with them yesterday, so I'm going to start it slow as if I haven't worked on it at all just so you guys can see what I would do. But the very first thing I'm going to do um, and something that I've been doing since yesterday is I just have the vacuum sitting out. Um, since they're a little bit fearful of it, especially the air that's blowing out of the front, uh, the more exposure they get to it when it's not doing that, the more they'll see that it's nothing that's going to harm them. So I've just had the vacuum sitting out since yesterday when we worked on it. Um, and today we're going to get back into like the vacuum actually running and moving. So the very first thing that I'm going to do when I'm working with the vacuum is I'm just going to pull it out. And I'm going to let them investigate it. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Yes. And as long as they're offering me something besides the attacking and or scared behavior that they were showing, um, I'm going to go ahead and reward them. So Cash is sitting right here to my right. I know, pretty good boy. And then we have the other ones as well. So again, now that it's off, I'm just going to get it. And get it moving a little bit. Good dogs. Good dogs. Yes, that's very nice. And again, as long as they're not acting fearfully towards it or trying to attack it, I'm going to go ahead and reward them. Good dogs. Thank you. See? Good dogs. Very nice. Okay. So, um, obviously, they aren't getting too worked up about it right now while it's off, which is great. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on um, and see how they respond. Good dog. Good dog. starting to get a little bit frightful of it so I'm going to go ahead and shut it off for a second give her a little bit of a break so she can reset because she's being such a good girl so where you can she's some good puppies and you're being good too Mikey. you're being good too so go ahead give them a little break for a second move my little kitty toy out of the way and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep working it <laughs> Good boy. Good 
Yeah. So right there, um, I noticed in Cash's body language that he was starting to get a little bit worked up. He was starting to get a little bit excited. So I'm going to go ahead and that's when I'm going to shut it off. Um, remember that whenever we're doing threshold training or we're trying to change a behavior or a dog's reaction to a stimulus, the most important thing that you can do is make sure that you're shutting off and disengaging that before they have the opportunity to go over threshold. By doing this, I just get to continue to reward them for that nice calm behavior, even with the vacuum running. And I don't have to reset them. I don't have to give them a leave it or a no or anything like that. I can just reward them for that nice calm behavior. Whereas if I wait and I push them over that threshold limit, then it's going to take a lot more um, cueing and a lot more work on my part, as well as a lot more effort to go ahead and keep counter conditioning. Because each time they have that bad reaction, it's going to make it that much harder for you to program the good reaction. So um, since, you know, the one point Bella was getting scared, we shut it off, take a break. Cash starts getting a little bit more worked up about it, we shut it off, take a break. It's all about doing it in baby steps and making sure that it's staying 100% positive all the time, uh, which I think we're doing a pretty good job of right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more, uh, see just kind of how they react, and um, then hopefully we'll be done working on the vacuum for the day. Um, Sorry about that, y'all. Had to pick up some uh, some of Cash's damage really quickly before I kept running my vacuum. Don't want to break it in the meantime. So, um, gonna roll on over to this area here. You're okay, good girl. You're okay, good girl. Yeah, there you go, good, good girl. So as you can see right then, Bella was definitely looking a little bit more fearfully towards the vacuum. She wasn't a huge fan of it. Meanwhile, Cash is laying here so nicely. Good boy, good boy. So, gonna go ahead and reward them and then keep going. some good puppies that is some good puppies okay so I don't know if you guys can see them but they both are just sitting here and being so so good so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish up with that we're gonna go ahead and leave that alone for the day um, they both are doing so so well with it that I just want to make sure that I end it on a high note that way they know you know it's gonna end as long as they're doing good and they're staying calm so another thing I wanted to mention, um, stop doing that. So another thing that I wanted to mention quickly um, is that this is a prime example of an opportunity where using older adult dogs that are already used to these sort of things and can kind of set the the precedent for what their behavior should be is a really good idea. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know you can see Hershey here. In the background um, and Bruce is over there by the door but they're both just laying out of the way they're comfortable they're relaxed they're just kind of chilling yes they will get up and move away if I'm coming towards them with the vacuum but um, they're not freaking out they don't bark they don't chase it they don't do any of those things and so having these two older dogs here who are relaxed and calm and not freaking out is showing these young pups here that there really is nothing for them to be afraid of and there's no reason for them to be reactive towards it because if they're not being reactive why should they have to be so this is just another really great example of like how you can incorporate older dogs that already know how to behave into your training um, next what we're going to go ahead and work on a little bit with them uh, is the broom again they definitely attack the broom a lot more than the vacuum cleaner we have worked on this several times already, so hopefully they shouldn't be too bad. Um, 
but before I bring before I bring the broom out, I want to tell you about um, what happened yesterday when we were working with the broom. So I had the broom out and um, Bella is Bella was the more reactive one towards the broom. She wanted to grab onto it almost immediately. She was very reactive towards it. Um, so we started working her leave it and her no reward marker with it. Bella did really well. Um, and Cash didn't really care about the broom at first. Stop. Cash didn't really care. Stop. Cash didn't really care about the broom at first, um, but then he saw Bella constantly going after it and then getting rewarded when I would tell her to either leave it or give her the no reward marker. And so then Cash started doing the same thing, um, which was a perfect example of how litter mates like these two feed off of one another and will change their behavior based off of what the other one is doing. Cash, when he started going after the broom, he really didn't care about the broom itself. He had just watched Bella get rewarded enough times for going after it and then leaving it alone that he figured out that was going to get him a reward too. So he went after the broom, but then as soon as I gave him the leave it or the uh-uh, he would start nudging at my hand like, okay, where's my treat? He figured out very, very quickly that each time he re-disengages from that broom, he's going to go ahead and get a treat. Um, again, this was just based off of watching his sister and watching what she was doing. Hershey, please. Please stop. Thank you. So with Cash, with Bella, with the broom, I was able to give her the no reward marker or the leave it, and she figured it out very, very quickly what she was supposed to do. Um, whereas with Cash, it was strictly a self-rewarding behavior. He figured out that if he goes for it and I tell him to leave it and he leaves it, he gets a treat. So it was strictly self-rewarding. It wasn't even really a prey drive or like a drive type thing like it is with Bella. For him, it was, can you just relax? It was just him trying to get a reward. So in a situation like that, where dogs are only doing behaviors because they know that it's gonna be rewarding to them, you cannot fix them with positive reinforcement. Uh, Cash was a perfect example of that because with him, the positive reinforcement was then doubly rewarding to him. Now he gets to play with the broom and he gets a treat. So continuing to reward him for leaving the broom alone was not going to help. He was just going to keep doing it because he knew that the disengagement was what was going to get him that reward. So when Cash went after it, like the third or fourth time, all I did was make the broom come back at him, AKA I swatted him with like the bristly part of it. Um, I wasn't trying to hurt him. I wasn't trying to like, I wasn't trying, yeah, I wasn't trying to hurt him. I was just trying to build a negative association with the broom, right? That if he attacks the broom, the broom's gonna attack back. Um, the reason why I did this is because I needed to make that behavior unrewarding to him. I needed to make that experience with the broom itself less rewarding than him getting a treat for disengaging from it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the broom and I'm going to see how they respond today. Um, I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm just looking for them to hopefully not like lunge at it and go after it like they did before. So just give me one second. I'll grab my broom and I'll be right back. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna. Good girl, see? Good girl. So right away, you can see that Bella obviously is the one that's more motivated towards it. However, she has not started taking advantage of the system yet. She responds well to the leave it and, or the uh-uh, either one. Um, usually when I'm working this, I'll give her the leave it beforehand um, and then I'll give her the uh-uh if I see her go for it anyway. So we're just gonna continue doing these, leave it. Good girl. 
Good, leave it. Thank you. Good girl. Leave it. As you can tell by watching Bella, she definitely um, has a much higher prey drive than Cash does. She, um, leave it. Good dog. Thank you. Some good dogs. However, you can also see that the longer the broom is out, the more anxious they're getting and the more they're wanting to go after it. Leave it. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you. Good girl. Good girl. So right now, we're about up to three or four brush strokes at a time before they're showing any sort of like reaction or wanting to go after it, which is way better than yesterday because yesterday, as soon as I pulled the broom out, Bella was going after it. So definitely making some progress. Leave it. Uh, uh, uh. Leave it. Bella. Thank you. Good girl. Another thing that I've been working on with these guys, even though it's not always necessary, um, is I will not reward them, generally speaking, until they go ahead and they offer me a nice sit. The reason why I'm doing this is because they are both extremely impatient and they want everything right now on their schedule. Um, so by me forcing them to wait until they calm down and sit down to be rewarded, it's not just that I'm rewarding them for leaving the broom, or like not coming after the broom, but they're getting rewarded for that nice calm behavior simultaneously. Because remember, with any self-rewarding behavior, whatever we're asking them to do instead has to be more rewarding than whatever that behavior was. Uh, uh, uh. Bella, leave it. Leave it. Bella. Leave it. Good. Good girl. Thank you. Thank you. So right then, I kind of did the same thing with Bella that I did with Cash, where I just gave her a little love tap as she was going for it. Again, I'm not trying to hurt her, but I'm trying. I'm just trying to let her know that if she co keeps coming after the broom, the broom is going to then come after her. We need it to be at least a little bit unrewarding since it is just a rewarding behavior for her. Leave it. Good dogs. Good dogs. Thank you. Good dogs. Leave it. Good girl. Good girl. So that time I, I, went, I kind of pushed them a little bit to see what their threshold was right then. Um, I got to like five or six swipes or so before she finally went after it. Um, and then she responded really well to the uh uh. So, go, obviously, gonna go ahead and reward. Leave it. Bella. Good girl. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good girl. Very nice. Okay, guys. So, we definitely made some good progress just now. Um, like I said, yesterday when I first pulled the broom out, she 
went after it immediately as soon as it touched the ground. Um, so the fact that I was able to get like five or six brush strokes in there without her just full on lunging and attacking it, attacking it was definitely huge progress. So um, those are two ways that I would work with like controlling a dog's stimulus, specifically with like a broom or a vacuum. If you guys have any questions about anything, of course, feel free to reach out and let me know. Um, but otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day.